2D game graphics is built from textures, sprites and tiles. Sometimes though, you just want to draw a few lines or create shapes on the fly. Like for example the scanner beam in my ongoing space game project here. So in today's tutorial I want to talk about drawing 2D geometry in code. This is actually very easy in Godot. The required code isn't complex, so no worries. We are going to create this simple player character in code from scratch. As a little bonus, I'll demonstrate how to render this into an off-screen viewport to create a low resolution pixel art style version. I often use this method to get the telltale blocky look but still be able to move things around smoothly at actual screen resolution. In any case, off-screen rendering is a very useful tool in many situations so it's definitely worth learning about. As usual, let's start by creating a new project. You can leave all the project settings at their default values for this one. Create a node for the main scene. Add a color rect as a background, then set the anchor preset to full screen. This will only work with node or control as the parent. Don't use node 2D here. Now let's create a scene for our Miss Pac-Man drawing. This is going to be derived from node 2D. Add it to the main scene and move the node to somewhere near the center. Switch over to the new scene. Since we're doing all the drawing and code, there's nothing to be added to the tree here. Just attach a new script. Okay, we're ready to get started. All our drawing code goes into the draw function. This is called automatically by Godot. For static graphics, you don't need to worry too much about performance. This function is not going to be called every frame. In fact, let's add a print statement first, so we can see how often it is called. When we start this, nothing shows up yet, of course. And we see here, draw is called just once. When you resize the window, for example, you can see Godot requesting redraws of the scene. Inside draw, there are a number of functions you can call to draw lines, circles, rectangles, polygons, etc. These functions are all implemented in the canvas item class. Take a look at the documentation to familiarize yourself with what is there. We are going to start with a classic Pac-Man body. I want this to be like a pie with a missing slice for the mouth. Unfortunately, there isn't a ready to use function for that. We can only draw full circles or arc segments. But here's the trick, we can fake it to some degree by using an arc with a really wide line. So I am using draw arc. The origin of the arc, that is the center of the circle, is going to be at local position 00, zero the origin of the node we are implementing. The radius of the circle is 100 units. Normally I would avoid putting literal numbers into the code. It's better practice to create reusable variables and constants. But I want to keep this really simple for demonstration purposes. Next is the start and end angle of the arc. I'm going full circle minus half the mouth opening angle above and below the x-axis. These angles are specified in radians, so I'm using deck to rat here to convert the angle. Then we have the point count. Godot is creating polygons from the arc sampled at fixed intervals. The lower this number is, the more you'll see the vertices connected by straight lines. I'm going to add a low number so you can see what I mean. Then we have the color of the arc, which is of course a bright Pac-Man yellow. And finally the line width. Let's use a thin line for now so we can see what is going on. This will change. If we run this, there's our arc. Note the visible corners. Okay, to create a more well-rounded shape, let's increase the number of points to around 50. Also, I'm now making the line width twice the radius of the circle. Looks a lot more familiar, doesn't it? We are ready to draw the eye. This one is really simple. A circle placed on top of the arc we drew before. Radius 15, make it black. By default the circle is filled already. Done. Alright, I think you can take it from here. That's really all there is to it. Bye. Just kidding, there are a few more interesting things I can show you. For example, Miss Pac-Man's hair bow. This is going to be made of two triangles. There's no draw triangle function though, so we will draw this as a very simple polygon. 
To draw a polygon, you need at minimum the corner points and one color. These are passed as a packed array, which can be initialized from vectors. So let's define our triangle vertices. Since we have only one color for the whole thing, we can use draw colored polygon. The more general draw polygon function would allow one color per point. As you see, the triangle now sits right at the center of the body. We could move it by changing the point coordinates, but there is a better way. Each shape we draw goes through a transform, that is rotation, translation and scale. We can change it to draw our polygon multiple times at different places. So before drawing the polygon, we use set transform to move and rotate the triangle. And we use another set transform to draw the same polygon rotated by 180 degrees. And here's the result. Now, Ms. Pac-Man is hungry. Let's add an animation to the mouth opening. First of all, we change the code to store the mouth angle in a variable, which we can then animate. In process, we want to smoothly change the angle from its maximum to zero and back. I am using a running time value, the time in seconds since the node is created. We simply accumulate delta values here. To get a smoothly changing value, I'll use a sign function. Don't worry, we are not going to need any trigonometry here. It is oscillating and that is enough for us. If you recall, the sign function output varies between minus one and plus one over a period of two pi. To get one full cycle per second, we can multiply our time value with tau, which is just a shorthand for two pi in Godot. Add one, multiply by 0.5, and we have a function smoothly oscillating between 0 and 1. Now we can conveniently multiply that with our maximum mouth opening angle. The final step is to let Godot know it should redraw the geometry. This is done using QRedraw. And there we have it, gobbling Miss Pac-Man. I really think the eye should move along with the upper jaw though. We can easily fix that using the setTransform function we have seen before. A rotation around the origin using the mouth angle should do the trick. Yes, that looks a lot better. This is as far as I will go on here about drawing with code. Now, as promised, a little bonus on off-screen rendering for pixel art. Currently, we are rendering our Miss Pac-Man node directly into the main scene. Instead, we will now render it into an off-screen texture. Create a sub-viewport node and move Miss Pac-Man underneath. I want a really low resolution here, so in the sub-viewport inspector panel, set the size to 64 by 64, disable 3D, we don't need that, and finally check transparent. Our Miss Pac-Man node needs to fit into this tiny 64x64 64 64 window now. Change the position to 32, 40 and scale her down to 0.1. If we run this, we won't see anything. We need to create another node which actually displays the contents of this sub viewport. Let's add a Sprite2D node to the scene. For the texture, select New Viewport Texture. Pick the sub viewport from the list. I'm scaling this sprite by 4 to achieve the blocky look. Set the texture filter to nearest as well. Now move the new sprite to the middle of the screen. And here is Miss Pac-Man with retro appeal. You will notice some flickering due to our low resolution sampling of the animated circular arc. One way to alleviate that is to nudge positions a bit. Let's try 32.5 in X. Much better. There's still a tiny flicker. Let's add more points to the body arc to make the geometry more stable at different mouth angles. There, this looks better now. How scale and position affect your sub viewport rendering depends entirely on the shapes you are drawing so you might not even run into this problem. As a final touch, I want to add some player movement code. 
We can also use the sprite's horizontal flip flag to turn her left and right without changing any of the drawing code. I'm adding this directly to the main scene script for simplicity. And one final final note, having the draw functionality in canvas item also means that you can add drawing code to any class that derives from it. For example, you could draw over Sprite2D. You don't even have to implement draw, there is a signal handler as well. This can be more convenient because you don't have to implement a new class to add drawing code to. So if we take our sprite here, we can easily connect the draw signal and in the handler, use the draw functions on the sprite. Let's add a red circle, doesn't matter really. As you can see, this is rendered in full resolution on top of the sprite contents. When you move around, you'll also notice that the circle moves along with the sprite. It is affected by the sprite's transform but it doesn't react to setting the flip flag. The circle is not part of the sprite texture content. Something like this could be useful to, for example, adorn a sprite with a frame. That's it for today. Hope you got something useful out of this. As always, you could help me out a great deal by letting me know what topics you would like to see me cover in future tutorials. Until next time, keep making games. Bye.